Welcome to Top Linux Tech. This is lesson number three of the basic tutorial for beginners, and today we will be talking about hardware devices and how the Linux system sees and manages them. I will also explain the few utilities that you can utilize to find detailed information about the hardware on your Linux machine and how to check if something is not working correctly. When we think about hardware, we simply mean the components that actually build a computer system. Such components, for example, are the computer's motherboard, CPU, video card, network card, sound devices, and so on. Many of these components are integrated into the motherboard and can be enabled or disabled through the computer's BIOS, which controls if they can be seen in the operating system. So how does Linux see these devices and which tools you can use to identify and manage them? Following the Unix philosophy and built on the same concept, in Linux everything is a file, and in this case when we talk about hardware devices, they are also represented as a file within the Linux file system. These files are pointers to the underlying hardware for each device and can be found inside the dev directory. When you switch into this directory, you'll see plenty of files referencing these devices, files such as SDA, SDB, MD1, or TTY, and so on. For example, SDA means storage device A, which can be a hard drive, an SSD, or a USB removable device, while their numbers designate the partitions. Numbers such as SDA1 or SDB1 means the first partition of the same device. There are also devices like network cards that are not listed into the dev folder because they operate in a different way but when configuring the network, you may notice them as if 0 if one or EMP3S0, for example. There are also virtual devices or concepts that represent part of the operating system itself, like the TTYs, which are references to the virtual terminal and the display. Let's take a quick look at the terminal and see how this works. So here I have my terminal open, and now if we switch into the dev folder with the cd command, which stands for change directory, so if we type in cd forward slash dev and press enter, we will be relocated inside the dev folder. Now if we type ls to list directory contents and press enter, we will see all of these files that are actual references to the hardware devices in our computer. Think of this like something similar to the device manager in Windows. This VDA is my virtual disk, for example, and the VDA 1, 2, and 3 are the partitions belonging to the same disk. Now, let me quickly plug in a USB drive here and see what happens. Let's clear the screen and list directory contents again. And as you can see now, this USB disk appeared instantly as a referenced file inside the dev folder, and it's called SDA, and it actually contains two partitions. If we plug in another USB drive, it will probably appear as SDB, the next one SDC, and so on. So basically, whatever device we plug into the computer, it will appear here in the dev folder. Now, you might be wondering what about drivers? Usually, when you install a new device in your computer that's running Windows, 
it will be listed in the device manager as unknown device until the drivers are downloaded and installed for that specific device. But in this case, with Linux, these so-called drivers are actually available as running kernel modules. The good part about the Linux kernel is that it is a large monolithic block structure with loadable modules, and on most Linux distributions, when you get the latest kernel in the updates, it already comes packed with these modules so that devices will run and function out of the box without the need to install any additional device drivers, except in cases when there is a proprietary driver that you need to download and insert it manually as a new running kernel module. Like for example, the NVIDIA card driver. Now, Linux will support any video card when you plug it in inside the PCI Express slot of your computer, and it will run fine with the default open source module. However, in this case, you might want to load the official module in order to have the extended features such as 3D acceleration in video games. Let's now see the command line tools that can help us identify the hardware devices. If we want to find out more about the hardware devices in our computer, such as the devices on the motherboard, like the PCI devices and the controllers, we can use the command lspca to do that. So now if we type in lspci and press enter, we'll see a list of all of the PCI devices and controllers that exist into our system. And you can recognize many of these. For example, here is the video controller that's currently installed into the system. And basically, this is not a real machine, but it's a virtual one. So you see this Red Hat Incorporated QXL Para Virtual Graphics Card. But if this was a real system, you would probably see an NVIDIA or AMD card listed here under the VGA compatible controller. You can also see information about your motherboard and the chipset, your audio device, or the Ethernet card that you have installed into your PC. If we are interested in more details, we can run the same command with the V flag, which stands for verbose, and we will get a more detailed information about each and every device. And for example, if we want to find about all of the USB devices that are currently attached to our system, we can run the command ls usb and press enter. And this will give us the list of all of the devices that are currently attached on every USB port of our computer, such as uh, USB mass storage devices or peripheral devices, for example. So you can immediately see here that I have already attached my 16 gigabytes USB drive and more detailed information such as uh, the bus, the device number, the ID and the manufacturer. If we want to find out even more details about the USB devices, we can run the command USB devices and press enter. And basically this will give us even more detailed information like the vendor ID, the manufacturer, the product name and the serial number and so on and so on. We can also see the currently running kernel modules by typing in the command ls mod and press enter and here in this list we can see which modules have been enabled and activated for the currently operating kernel so for example you can see here from the list that the usb storage module has been loaded and also since i am using an audio device for example here we can see that we have the codec for the sound device and the sound device itself, which is Intel HD audio device. And basically, if we scroll down, we can see all other modules that have been loaded. The kernel supports dynamic loading of modules. So they are 
commands that we can use in order to load or unload other kernel modules, but for this we will talk into one of the more advanced lessons. For now, I just want you to be aware of this and keep it in mind. Now, there is another tool that I'd like to show you, and this one is used to display system events as they happen. The tool is called dMessage, and it can be used to find out in real time about what the kernel sees when you plug in some device into your computer. Also, you can use it to troubleshoot problems if some device that you have plugged in doesn't actually show or work. So the command is dmesg or dmesg, which is short for dmessage. And if we press enter, it will actually display system events from the time the computer was started and up until the most recent moment. So you can find what happened during the boot time or what happens now at the moment. So for example, I'm going to insert my USB drive again. So let's first eject the USB drive and then plug it back in. And now if I run the message again, we'll see at first that there was some error. For example, you see here buffer input output error on dev SDA1. Um, this error is probably because I'm using a virtual machine and the USB drive is passed from the physical machine into the virtual one. So probably that's because I'm getting it. But next you see that the USB was disconnected and then it was reconnected to the system again. So you see new high-speed USB device number six uh, is found and the product is silicon power and the serial number is this one. And finally, up until the end itself, you see that the system has attached the removable disk as SDA. And as you can see, this utility is quite useful because it gives us very detailed information about every event when it happens into the system. And always remember to run the message first if there is any device that you have plugged into the system and then it refuses to work. Now let's explain about the process of how hardware is being detected and what happens in the background when you plug in a new device into the system. Within the root file system structure, there is a directory called sys. This directory, like the dev directory, is mounted on a virtual file system called sysfs, which contains no real files on your disk because these virtual file systems operate in memory and are created on the fly when the system boots up. SysFS contains information about the system's hardware, such as device's specific configuration, memory addressing, firmware, and plenty of other device mapping information, all organized in a nice and efficient way. During boot time, this virtual file system is being populated with information about the hardware and then there is this other system called udev which reads this information from sysfs and maps it in a form of reference files inside the dev folder. So basically, the udev system is what populates the dev folder based on the information gathered from sysfs. And what happens when a new device appears inside the dev folder? Well, now another system called dbus reads this information from the dev folder and then relays it as signals to the operating system and running programs. So basically, dbus 
is signaling system for the running application to know what to do next with the device that you have just plugged in. Like for example, when you insert that USB disk into your computer's USB port, the information now gathered from the device inside the dev folder will be relayed in such way in which the bus will signal the system to mount the disk so it will appear on your desktop or file manager. And this is the magnificent machinery in Linux that works behind the scenes every time with the hardware devices that we use every day. In this lesson, we learned how the Linux system sees and manages the computer hardware, and we talked about the few command line utilities that you can use in order to find out information about the hardware on any Linux system. We also learned about the virtual file systems such as devfs and sysfs and how they operate together with udev and dbus in an organized way to detect, map and activate various hardware devices. In the next video I will be talking about using the command line, the essential commands that you need to know and the Linux file system hierarchy. This is the end of this video, and if you have enjoyed it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.